What's up guys, it's me, Kadar, and in this video, I'll be taking a look at some fun and interesting facts about trading card games. This video is the sixth and final part in my series on the history of trading card games, so check out my older videos. And without further ado, let's jump right into the video. First up, let's take a look at some interesting tidbits about Magic the Gathering. Magic was the first trading card game ever made, so there were bound to be some funny mistakes and interesting bits of information during its development and its evolution. Initially, Magic the Gathering's deck size was going to be 40 cards minimum, and you could have as many copies of a card as possible. This obviously led to some powerful cards being used a lot in many decks, so Magic was revised to have a 60 card minimum, with 4 copies of a card per deck. The card Stasis in the first card set in Magic the Gathering, which was Alpha, was illustrated by Richard Garfield's aunt. The artist, Faye Jones, made the illustration for the card as a favor for her nephew. Mark Rosewater, who is the lead designer for Magic the Gathering right now, came up with the entwined mechanic in his sleep. Sometimes cards in Magic the Gathering have multiple abilities, and the player must choose one of those abilities to play, but the entwine mechanic allows the player to pay some mana to choose both choices instead of just one. Another funny story is that a new freelance artist for Magic the Gathering was working with the design team to draw a lightning bolt hitting a drake. A drake is essentially a small dragon, but the artist got confused and drew a lightning bolt hitting a male duck, which is also called a drake. The current font used for Magic the Gathering is called Valerian, which is named after a popular character in Magic the Gathering called Chase Valerian. Next up, we have Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! is based off of a manga and anime, and there's bound to be some interesting facts about the series and card game. Yu-Gi-Oh! maintains a forbidden and limited list of cards to prevent players from abusing the effects of powerful cards. One card is to blame for this forbidden and limited list, and that is the card Yadagarasu. Yadagarasu, when used in conjunction with the card Chaos Emperor Dragon, caused an opponent to completely skip their draw phase, depriving them of resources to continue playing. This combo was so powerful that Konami, the creators of the Yu-Gi-Oh card game, had to ban Yadagarasu to stop it from absolutely dominating the metagame. The main character of the original Yu-Gi-Oh anime had a rival in the form of the anti-hero Seto Kaiba. Seto Kaiba was based on a real person, who was a friend of Kazuki Takahashi, the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh! Takahashi's friend was obsessed with trading card games, and when Takahashi asked his friend to teach him how to play trading card games, his friend told Takahashi to come back after he collected 10,000 cards. Takahashi based Seto Kaiba off of this encounter. In the original Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, there are three powerful cards called the Egyptian God Cards, which were Obelisk the Tormentor, Slifer the Sky Dragon, and the Winged Dragon of Ra. The main character, whose name was Yugi Moto, possessed Slifer the Sky Dragon, which is actually named after a real person. In the Japanese language, Slifer was called Osiris the Heaven Dragon, but was renamed to Slifer after Roger Slifer, who worked on the English dub of Yu-Gi-Oh. One of the card's names in Yu-Gi-Oh is Giant Trunade, which is actually a mistranslation of the Japanese name of the card. The Japanese version of Giant Trunade is actually called Hurricane, and it was translated to be Giant Tornado in the English version, but with the Japanese pronunciation, which is Torunado. Torunado was then mistranslated to Trunade, thus resulting in the name Giant Trunade. In the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's anime, one of the villains, named Red Nova, was said to be trapped in a fictional geoglyph called the Snake Nazca Line. Afterward, in 2014, the Sandstorm coincidentally revealed that a Snake Nazca line actually existed. Lastly, there's Pokemon, and it, like Yu-Gi-Oh!, has an anime tied to the game, and the Pokemon trading card game is also tied to the Pokemon video games. With the franchise's lengthy history, there's plenty of fun and interesting facts about the games, the animes, and the card games. Before the Pokemon TCG became a hit outside of Japan, a special batch of Raichu cards were made, which had pre-release written on the bottom of them. Only 10 of these cards were made, and they cost a huge sum of money. In 1998, Illustrator Pokemon cards were given to the winners of an illustration contest. Only 39 Illustrator cards exist, and they fetch a huge price at auctions due to them being famous cards and their rarity. In Saudi Arabia, 
The Pokemon card games are banned, as in the government's eyes, the games encourage gambling and un-Islamic teachings. In the original Pokemon anime, there was an episode called Electric Soldier Porygon, which aired in December of 1997, and it caused 685 cases of epileptic seizures, and the anime had a record in the Guinness Book of World Records of 2008 for most photosensitive epileptic seizures caused by a television show. Two Pokemon named Hitman Lee and Hitmo Chan are based off of two famous martial artists, which are Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan, respectively. Those are some fun facts about trading card games. Please leave a like on this video and subscribe for more content, as well as comment any other fun facts about trading card games you know down below. If you're interested in getting your hands on the next step in trading card games, the Gladiator trading card game, a link to the shop page will be in the description down below. Have a good day! And I'll see you in the next video.